Joshua chapter 5, starting at verse number 1. When you have it, please say amen. 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 The word of God says, when all the Amorite, Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings who lived along the Mediterranean coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan River mm, so the people of Israel could cross, they lost heart and were paralyzed with fear because of them. Sometimes God does things in people's lives because it's not really for you, it's for the people that's watching you. And the Bible says, my God, in verse 2, that at that time the Lord told Joshua, Joshua was the successor to Moses, make flint knives and circumcise the second generation of Israelites. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel at Gibeah, Herloth. That means the heel of foreskin, Bishop told me. Ooh, the heel mm. of foreskin. Joshua had to circumcise them because all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt had died in the wilderness. Those who left Egypt had all been circumcised, but none of those born after the exodus during the, the years in the wilderness had been circumcised. Verse 6 says, Israelites had traveled in the wilderness for 40 years until all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt died. Did y'all catch that? When they left, there was a mighty army. But because of disobedience and breaking covenant, many of them died. Yeah, yeah. And while they was in the wilderness for 40, for 40 years, God allowed them to have children. And so God said, I'm taking a second generation on into promise. Are you listening to me? It says, so until all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt had died for they had disobeyed the Lord and the Lord vowed he would not let them enter the land he had sworn to give us a land flowing with milk and honey so Joshua circumcised their sons those who had grown up to take their father's places for they had not been circumcised on the way to the promise oh my God uh, after all the males had been circumcised they rested in the camp until they were healed Verse 9 says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the shame of slavery. My God speak. In Egypt, so that the place uh, has been called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped at Gilgal, Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover. My God, on the evening of the 14th day of the first month, the very next day, they began to eat unleavened bread and roasted grain harvested from the land. No mama appeared on the day that, oh my God, on the day they first ate from the crops of the land. And it never has, it never was seen again. So from that time on, the Israelites ate from the crops of Canaan. Canaan means promise. Canaan means freedom. <sighs> they no longer ate from captivity and bondage. Oh, my God, God had moved the people on to another level. <laughs> oh, I'm going so well, I promise you. Come on. Father God, I just thank you for the freedom to teach. Oh, my God, fill my spirit with supernatural revelation. Father God, change me into a different person as I stand before this great Augustine of believers. Draw up out of me, Father God, supernatural revelation, supernatural wisdom, supernatural understanding. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you have given the people ears. To receive and urge to understand and hear with Father God in the name of Jesus. Father God, pull out the heart of stone, mm, disbelief and unbelief and fear, and put a heart of understanding inside of us all. Your word decrees and declares, and all you're getting, get an understanding. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that we got to hear, Father God, from the Constitution, Father God, of today, Lord. So let your kingdom come and your manifest will be done right here, Father God, inside a going hall for Christ Church. Save somebody's soul, reclaim. Claim someone, Lord. Move us on to the promise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In chapter 4, let me give a little history. In chapter 4, my God, God told them in chapter 4, verse 1, God told Joshua, when all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take 12 stones. From the various place, from the very place, my God, where the priests were standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up, my God, at the place where you would camp tonight, my God. So Joshua called together men. 
he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. My God, as they began to cross the Jordan, my God, God parted the Jordan just like he did the Red Sea. My God, and the people of the Israelites came up on the other side. And sometimes, my God, well, all the time, my God, we should always build and have memorials in our life. What are memorials? memorials something that you can remember my God, you something that you can remember that God has done for you. I preached a sermon way back in 2013, I believe, is the blessing is in remembrance. You need to have memorial, memorials in your life. Every last one of us, no matter what you're facing, no matter what it feels like, you got some memorials. You can remember. Oh, my God, you can think back what God has done for you in your past. Do I got a witness out there? Yeah. And so God told them to cross over. Now that you have crossed over, my God, take from that same place where you crossed over the Jordan, take 12 stones. First, get me 12 men. And then take 12 stones, and when you come up on the other side, you build, you lay those 12 stones right down there. So when you come back this way, sometimes God will take you back to the past so you can remember what he done as you move to the future. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You place these 12 stones, my God. So when you come back this way, my God, you will remember what I've done for you. And so, my God, to fully possess, to fully possess, my God, the promise, my God, they have come through, my God. Now they're on the other side of the Jordan. They're actually in the promised land. They're actually in Canaan. But how many know that Canaan represents freedom? My God, Canaan also represents the promise. But before God can take them any farther, Pastor Chell, before that you and I as a body of Christ, uh, as a whole body of Christ, also individually, but before you and I can move forward, there are some steps. There are some things that has to be done. Oh, you may be in freedom, my God. Oh, my God, but you got to let freedom get inside you now. Oh, my God, you've been under so much captivity for so long, my God. But now God is saying it's time for another surgery. Mm. Now it's time for, my God, for something to happen down in, the, in, in your life, my God, to move you on into the promise. How many know that different times of life you're going to have Gilgal experience? Everybody need to stop by Gilgal. Everybody need to go back, my God, where you first fell in love with God. Some of us need to go back and remember what God done for us and how he done it and when he done it, my God. Some of us, sometime through life, my God, oh, our love and our affection for God begin to shift. My God, our fire begins to get dim, my God. We begin to lose focus my God. Oh, it's a sad, but it's the truth, my God. Many people are shipwrecking all over the country, my God. Many people are turning away from God. They're not in love with Jesus like they used to be because so much got our attention nowadays. You got to have laser focus if you're going to make it. You got to have laser focus if you're going to possess the promised land. You got to have laser focus if you're going to see your family redeemed. You got to have laser focus if you're going to see your children come out. You got to have laser focus if you're going to see your marriage restored. You got to have laser focus and discipline, my God, in order to see your finances change. Come on. It's going to take laser focus in this hour. And you can always tell when somebody has lost focus because they become spotty. They become sticky. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, it's always the church's fault or somebody else's fault. But we ain't going to deal with that today. We're going to deal with us today. Come on, somebody and give God a hand right quick. And so let me get off into this, my God. You can't move forward. We free. How free are we though? We shout about freedom, we can see freedom, but how much is freedom possessing you this afternoon? You might not don't smoke cigarettes no more, you might not don't go to the club, that don't mean you're free. You may be physically sitting in this chair, my God, but that don't mean that you're free. Are you listening to me? We're going to talk about some real freedom, but before you can get really free and enjoy the Canaan, enjoy the promises, and have victory in your life, there's some things that you and I have to continually do. You've been doing it, but you got to keep doing them. Oh, my God, you can't stop when it gets good. Uh, matter of fact, when God do some things for you, it ought to increase your tenacity. It ought to make you more hungry. The Bible says, blessed is the man who hunger and thirsts after righteousness, my God. When you stop hungry, my God, you start backsliding. When you stop hungry, you start compromising. When you stop hungry for the things of God and you lose Focus, my God, you start making excuses. Oh, my God, who oh, instead of getting better, you get bitter. Oh, my God, because you're contaminated. Something bit you. Something bit you. And so God said, I can't take you no farther. God is saying to go on over Christ Church, you and I, my God, has been doing good battle. You and I, I and you, but we can't go no farther until we stop by Gilgal. Oh, my God, God can't do nothing else for going over Christ, my God, until we go through this surgery process that I'm getting ready to talk to you about. Oh, my God. So listen to this right here. Israel was the people of the Lord. Oh, my God, and the law and of the land. They was the people of the Lord, 
the law and the land. I thank God for my spiritual father. I thank God that I can always access him and say, talk to me. Oh, my God. He opened up the scripture while he was on the phone. I had him on the speaker in my office, and he woke that whole sermon down. Chapter 5, he says, my favorite, favorite, favorite chapter in the whole Bible to preach, my God. And he started just giving it to me. Ooh, I was just right, 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 right. My God, I just thank God that I can access a jewel and a gift, Pastor Tim. As a young man, that God can just call and say, talk to me. Oh, my God, put a sermon, my God. Drop some revelation in my spirit. Oh, my God, we open up the Bible, my God. And he just started speaking to me, Shirai. He just started breaking down words. I didn't know what they was. He told me this mean that. My God, talk about this right here. Drop this right here. I said, ooh, God, you love me so much. Somebody give God a hand. Why did I say that? Because you need each other to do what God has called you to do. Quit thinking that you don't need nobody. That's why you defeat it. So the Israelites was the people of the Lord, the law, and of the land. The great promises God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are about to be realized and keep everything in context by the people of Israel. The days of wandering are over. The days of possessing the land had arrived, y'all. God intends for Israel to conquer the land of Canaan and to possess it. One thing to conquer is another thing to possess. You may be in the land, but has the land possessed you? You may be in freedom, but how have you been overtaken by freedom? Oh, my God, you may talk about freedom, but has freedom really down on the inside of you? We free in the natural, but are we really free? We may be forgiven for our sins, but life is still beating us up because we're not stewarding our life right. Oh, my God, it's heavy. I'm sorry. It's Thanksgiving, but we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Before they are ready to do, my God, before they are ready to possess their land, there are some preparations that, must, that we must make, and they had to make. Before they can, oh, my God, before they can conquer, before they was ready to conquer, they free, but before they can move on, Pastor Teresa, before they can conquer and possess the real freedom, it's some things that they had to do. Just as God challenged Israel to prepare to move deeper into the promised land, there are some steps that he would like for us to do as well. So the title of this sermon is, let me see them, Pastor. The title of this sermon is because many of you want to go to another level. How many of y'all want to go to another level? How many of y'all want to see the promises of God operate in your life? How many of you want to see the things that you're reading, the things that you're hearing being fulfilled in your life? How many of you are sick and tired of being defeated in certain areas of your life? How many of you is ready to see down go Goliaths in your life? Oh, say, so, so, so therefore, God is saying, I done brought you out of Egypt. I did display many miracles, signs and wonders through the great, my God, deliver Moses. My God, now Moses is gone. Now I have raised up Joshua, and Joshua is a possessor. Who, my God, Joshua people, my God, have ceased from wondering. They have ceased from making excuses. Oh, my God, they are ready to possess. But God said, okay, the fathers, my God, only went as far as they can go. And so I'm going to take their sons on to the freedom. Real freedom. But before I can do that, I got to go back in history, he says. So the title of this sermon is Clip, Clip, Clip. I want y'all to get a good look at this right here. Because as I was praying, God showed me this. Clip, clip, clip. God said, I can't take you no further until you allow me to clip, clip, clip. I, oh, my God. You would never be able to experience real freedom until you start. You started. I start clipping. Clipping, clipping. Oh, my God. You will never let freedom possess you. You may be in freedom, but you're not free until you let God clip, clip, clip. Oh, this is Thanksgiving. Yep. Clip, clip, clip. So when you cut that chicken or you cut that ham, you better think about clip, clip, clip. What you doing in the natural, you cutting in the natural, but I'm going to talk to you about God cutting you in the spirit. Clip, clip, clip. And so, my God, the title of this sermon, as I said, is clip, clip, clip. And so God's saying, you're free now. But to move deeper into the promise, deeper into freedom, you got to be clipped. Let's go deep now. Point number one. Let's put it on the screen. There are some steps to consecration. I'm sorry, but as me and Mother Morgan and my wife then went out and took us some business this Friday, my God, it's sad, the state as a whole of the body of Christ. Why is it that we as pastors and leaders, my God, we have to be condemned and feel bad for preaching and living the truth. The very people that you think sitting in churches should be receiving the truth is rejecting the truth. 
If you tell them to stop mm, messing around, you tell them to stop doing stuff that's going to... If you tell the body of Christ to clip that stuff that's weighing them down, they get mad at you and leave the church. Even when you do it in apostolic anointing, even when you do it in the apostolic spirit, even when you do it with the love of Christ, when you tell somebody to start clipping, they're going to get me. As long as you don't tell me to do nothing, as long as you stay out of my way and let me be everything that I shouldn't be, I'm all good. As long as you let me do me, I'm okay. But if you get up in my face, my God, through Christ and love and tell me to clip, 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 all of a sudden now I got to find an excuse to get away from you. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore we have many people that's free, my God, physically, physically, but not free spiritually. God said, I can't do nothing else with you, Joshua and the people, until you go through this surgery. I've taken you fathers, I'm going to let you go. Because God is about covenant, not contract. The first people, my God, Abraham, let me do some history teaching. My God, let me get out the way. My God, turn with me to the book of Genesis. Told Pastor Champ I'm going to teach today, so y'all get ready. Turn with me to Genesis 17. Start at verse number 9, Genesis 17, 9. The word of God said, then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. He said continual Responsibility. This is not a one-time thing. You and I are responsible, my God, to obey God. I don't care what society is saying. I don't care what your, per your parents and your friends and your, come on, is saying. My God, if you know to do right, the Bible said those who choose to do wrong to him it is sin. This is something that you and I don't get to stop doing. When you're in covenant, you don't break covenant. You don't stop covenant. You don't, you don't, you don't commit to covenant when it's convenient. Come on, man. My God, if you say you in covenant with the man of God because you may not like something I said or something I may have done, my God, if you really in covenant, my God, why, why is it so easy for you to leave? Why is it so easy for you to get upset? My God, why is it so, my God, you say you love God, you say you in love with God, you say God is my everything, you say I'm graciously broken, in him I live and move and have my being. Why is it that when God don't do something to answer your prayer when you want to answer, why do you get discouraged or quit reading? Why do you get discouraged or quit coming to church? My God, why, why, why? We say we in love with God. If you really love God, why is it so easy for the people God to quit on God. Yeah, right yeah. Why is it? Ask yourself that question. Why is it? I told the woman of God, my God, on Friday, ain't nothing nobody Barry could do to make me stop serving God. I mean nobody. Ain't nothing that nobody in the church can do. I don't come from, from a bishop down to a baby. Ain't nothing gonna make me put down my Bible. Ain't nothing gonna make me close my Bible. Ain't nothing gonna make me stop fellowshipping. Ain't nothing gonna keep me out of the house of the Lord. Ain't nothing gonna make me get so bitter where I decide to say I'm through with going home for Christ. I'm through with my God with the people. I'm going back to the set. I'm going back to God. I'm out of the devil. is a life I ever go back to bondage. Well, why is it? If you love God, why is it that you get so discouraged you don't want to come to church? What did the church do? Because we always associate, because we ain't been renovated in our mind. We always associate, my God, the church with my problems. Yeah. Even though somebody may offend you, that don't mean you leave the church. Right. When God told you in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not to forsake. So, my God, so when you call yourself getting mad because somebody did something to you and you quit coming to church, you're not hurting me, you're hurting yourself. Because I'm in covenant, baby. I ain't no contract. Contract people, my God, to leave. Covenant people will stay. My God, no, no, my God, who am I talking to in the church? And so God was trying to establish covenant. So look what he's saying. He said, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and I, he says, you and all your descendants have this continuing responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male, among, each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day. Oh, my God. After, after his birth. In the verse... Uh, Number 14 says that any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking covenant. And so this was the first generation that we talked about that was in Egypt. That Pharaoh ended up getting help of God, ended up delivering. My God, but now we're into the second generation. This generation right here has not been circumcised. Oh, my God. So, my God, Abraham had, uh, uh, circumcised the first generation, and now Joshua, who? Is getting ready to circumcise the second generation. Because what is God saying? What am I trying to say? That God can't take you no farther into the promise. He can't take you no farther, my God, into the, who my God, to, into the freedom, my God, until you stop by Gilgal and let this circumcision take place. That's with the flesh. Are you with me so far? The first command the Lord gave, gives to Israel is that all men are to be circumcised. Circumcision was first handed down to Abraham, as I just read to you. It was a physical sign used to identify all the male descendants of Abraham. In circumcision, the foreskin of the male sex organ was removed. 
When the child was eight days old, I just read that to you. All the men who had been born in Egypt had been circumcised according to the Abrahamic covenant. Yet those who had been born during the 40 years of wilderness wandering had not been circumcised. Before this generation of men can claim their Canaan, don't miss this, y'all. Before this generation of my God, men can claim their Canaan, enjoy the covenant promises of God, or even expect God to fight their battles, they must be circumcised. Before they can enjoy the covenant promises. Don't you know this Bible is full of promises? This Bible right here, Shemaine, is full of promises for you and I. But that's also, my God, some promises are conditional, other promises are unconditional. Some promise you get when you just accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. But other promises, you got to follow the pattern, baby. You got to do it the way God said do it. My God, when he said do it, my God, how he said do it, so you can read the promises. Are you with me? The promises, the Bible is full of promises that go through your life. These promises are for you and I. When God wrote this over 3,000 years ago, he had you and I in mind right now today. All he said is do it my way and you will receive the promises. Oh, my God, we make Christianity harder than what it's meant to be. The Bible says the way of a transgressor. Don't you know Christians can transgress God's law? Don't you know that we can go against what God is telling us to do and make life hard and make our Christian walk grievous? Because we're trying to do it our way. That's why we all need to be circumcised. Oh, I want some word, I promise you. Mm. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. So we got to expect, if we want to expect God to fight our battles, there must be a circumcision. Flesh will always, write this down, flesh will always stop you from going to the promised land. God said, I got to do something with this flesh. I got to reestablish covenant with the second generation. Because the second generation that was born in the wilderness didn't know anything about covenant. So I want y'all to understand and I'm going to remind y'all this. My God, the God, God of covenant. God does not operate outside of covenant. Y'all need to hear me, church. I'm taking my time for a reason. God does not operate outside of covenant. When you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you should be entering into a covenant agreement. And when you understand, my God, that you have just entered into a covenant agreement, my God, Jesus was able to die for us because he was in covenant with us. Covenant is not something that you pick and choose that you get to do. Flesh will always keep you and stop you from going to the promised land. Many people have shipwrecked. Many people, my God, has, has left God because the flesh was in the way. If you don't allow God to clip, 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 I promise you, you'll be in Canaan, but you won't be free. You'll be in Canaan, but you won't enjoy the promises. Oh, my God, just like one of the women of God said, you could be two people could be sitting in the same classroom. My God, who my God, and one could benefit and the other won't, all because of perception. Two people could be sitting in the same classroom, all because of outlook and outcome and perception. One person will benefit, the other person won't. I wonder how many people are going to benefit from the clip, clip, clip. Understanding that you are trying to go deeper into God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, y'all better catch me. Some of us are trying to go deeper into God, deeper into the things of God, and you can't go because you got to be circumcised before you go. Now, we understand to keep things in contact. I'm watching my babies, my God, my God. But see, the males, were, well, their foreskins were clipped. Circumcision is a sign of covenant. God don't do nothing outside of covenant. And God said, okay, we didn't have some great exploits. My God, this second generation, my God, has seen me do some things in their life, but I cannot violate my covenant. <laughs> oh, I can't take them no further. We're going to stop right here because how many know that just on the other side of this circumcision was a Jericho? Yeah. Yeah. Jericho will always show up, my, my God, when you're trying to do God's will. Come on. I said the Jericho would always come up, my God, in freedom when you're trying to push deeper into purpose and the promises of God. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? And God said in order for you to defeat this, to defeat this Jericho, my God, in order for you to say, down go Goliath, you got to be circumcised. You're trying to fight giants, but you're not in covenant. So it's time to renew our covenant as a body to Christ. It's time to recommit even to going hard for Christ. Because some of your heart has ventured away from the ministry. You didn't been contaminated. You've been bit. My God, and you're no longer committed at the level you once was. You want everything from God, but you want to give God as little as possible. It don't work like that. Covenant people don't think like that. Covenant people, my God, to be sold asunder for God. Covenant people get their head cut off. Covenant the people be thrown in jail, my God, and they ask for a pen, a piece of paper, and a coat so they can write. Come on, Apostle Paul. Covenant people don't quit and shipwreck on God. Come on, who am I talking to? In the midst of the storms, the trial, and tribulation, a covenant person will stay grounded and rooted, my God. They won't be easily influenced, my God. You can't sway them one way or the other, my God. Oh, they oak trees. Come on, Mr. Sister Deneva. They oak trees, my God. And they will be in, but they won't move. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Some of us just uprooted ourselves. 
We hear it, but we're not planted. You have deviated from covenant. What am I trying to accomplish in the spirit? I'm trying to bring you back to covenant with Christ because you can no longer go forward. God stopped the people, Pastor Chump. He said, I can't go no farther. They got a Jericho, my God. They just, I just did a miracle and brought them through Jordan, my God. And I'm in chapter 5, and now I'm going to chapter 6, my God. But in order for them to, co- to, to cause this wall to come down, they're going to have to be clipped. There is a, another level of demons. There's another level of trials and tribulations that you're going to have to allow God to clip you. What am I talking about? I'm going to get to, you got to allow God to deal with your flesh. You got to allow God to deal with your attitude. You got to allow God to deal with your self-esteem and your self-confidence and your belief system. Oh, my God, because a lot of us are disqualified ourselves because we don't believe that we can do the things that God has shown us and asking us to do. Flesh is stopping you from possessing real freedom. Flesh. A lot of us are angry and frustrated because our flesh needs to die. Our flesh got to be clipped. Somebody say clip, clip, clip. clip, clip, clip. Come on, clip, clip, clip. clip, clip. And so this was a painful process to be clipped. That's the natural side. It's painful even in the spiritual side. Let me go a little deeper into this. How many of y'all want to win some battles? How many of y'all can really understand, okay, I'm in freedom, I done had a little victory, but there's so much more left. I feel it. So I'm on a cusp for something different. There's something else. My God, it is. Okay, 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 okay. Well, as I said, flesh will always stop you from going into the promised land. But they had to renew their covenant with the Lord if they wanted his blessings, y'all, on them. And if they wanted to be guaranteed victory. What am I trying to say? It's time for the church in her. And even to my guests, it's time for us to stop. And allow God to circumcise us so that we can move farther into that what God has called us to do. There is no way that God is going to let you. He didn't let the Israelites go no farther, and he's not going to let you and I go no farther. That's corporately as well as individually. Y'all need to catch me in the spirit, man. You're trying to push farther. You're trying to accomplish things that God ain't going to let you accomplish until you because there's too much flesh that's in the way. As I just told you, flesh will stop you from possessing your promised land. If you and I, I and you don't die, my God, welcome to stand right where you at. And you'll be finding yourself wondering. 2019 will look just like 2018 right now. Because God said, I gave you a word. It wasn't a Thanksgiving word. I'm trying to get you ready, my God, so your, 29, your 2018 can finish right and your 2019 can start right. So you can move so you can move deeper into purpose, deeper into the promises, so you can see the victory, so you can win some battles. Some of the battles you're trying to win by flesh, God's saying that's a, that's a spiritual battle. You're fighting it with the flesh. You out of rhythm. You out of timing. Your flesh is too alive. Sometimes God will allow situations to happen in our marriages. My God, he wants us to respond with the spirit, but yeah, we respond with the flesh. And we steady losing battles because our flesh is too alive. You got to be clip, clip, clip. Somebody say it again. Clip, clip, clip. Come on, say it again. Clip, clip, clip. Oh, my God. So you got to understand what God is trying to do. He's trying to renew the covenant with the people. He said, I can't take this generation over. I can't move no farther until we stop right here. And Joshua, you have to circumcise these people. Are y'all with me so far? Mm. Just as Israel was required to remove from their body a piece of flesh as a sign that they were a part of the covenant. We must also remove from our lives anything that stands between us and total surrender to God. What is standing? What Jericho? What Jericho? Jericho is a foe. Jericho is a a Goliath. What Jericho? We talked about down go Goliath. Now your question what you need to be posting on Facebook is what Jericho is standing between you and God? I started to bring my axe out here. Y'all know I got an axe too, right? I started to bring an axe, a hammer. Oh my God, because some of you might not, it might not be scissors. You may need a sludge hammer. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Oh my God. And some of you might not even be no, it might not even be a tool. It make a sister. You coming down here doing this right here. Putting your mind on the altar. Crucifying your mind. Sacrificing your mind. See what I'm trying to say? Whatever it takes, my God, to knock down that Jericho. What tool? What weapon? What is God saying to you this afternoon? Every one of us sitting in this room got a Jericho. That's standing in the way of you possessing your promise. And you're going to have to face your Jericho, baby. Mm -hmm. God wants to move the church forward. I'm sorry, but God has already started the clipping process. God spoke to me last week. I think I posted, my God, I'm purging for the comeback. 
God told me I'm purging for the comeback, and he dropped this message on me, and he told me, Minister Tony, I'm circumcising for the next move. I'm circumcising, circumcising for the next move. Are you with me so far? Ah, oh, my God. Circumcised, of course, means to cut off the foreskin of a male child. And then the circumcision, oh, my God, means the condition of being circumcised. It's a ceremony signifies Israel covenant with God. Are you in covenant this afternoon? Are you on contract? Are you willing to allow God to circumcise your belief system? Don't you know many of our Jerichos is in our mind? Don't you know that's your mind that's disqualifying you? People are not disqualifying you. That's why Paul said you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You think, my God, that the problem is your sister or your brother when it's really your belief system. How you look at yourself. And God, don't you know God will use that what is closest to you to circumcise you? That's why, my God, the greatest effect, my God, that someone can have on you is those that's closest to you. If, my God, if it's somebody that's not in my circle, they can't, they, the, the effect won't, oh, my God, the effect, my God, oh, my God, if somebody ain't in my circle and I deal with them from a distance, only, I don't really have no camaraderie with them, my God, I'm really not in their circle, they're not in my circle, what they say about me or what they try to do won't hurt as bad. Oh, but if it's Mama Donna, oh, my God, if it's Lisa, if it's Pastor Teresa, if it's, Tom, if it's Pastor Chan, see, those that's closest to you hurt you the most. But God, my God, what you see, my God, as an enemy is you see how the, oh, my God, God is saying, no, no, no. My God, this ain't the devil. This is me. Because, my God, I know that this situation by this person, because he's so close to you, I see so close to you, it was going to get the results. So, therefore, I got to use them. And now, my God, if you and I don't handle, who God got confrontation right? If you don't handle the will of God right, if you're not sensitive to the spirit of God and the workings of the spirit, my God, something that was supposed to bless you and cut you, my God, now you have removed yourself, my God, from the preparation to move deeper into God's kingdom. Oh, my God, this is too heavy. Oh, my God. Many have started backing up. Many have started, my God, falling from a distance. And it's okay. Because as I posted, my God, I'm learning boundaries. I'm learning boundaries. And so I got to get personally, my God. God is clipping me as I'm talking. I got to be okay, my God, with people that I used to talk to on the regular. I don't talk to as much. And it ain't because there's no animosity, my God. It's just a different season. See, I'm trying to say, I got to carry on with this mission that God has called me to carry on, my God. Don't take it personal, baby. I'm trying to get before God, my God. I got to be concerned with the studying and praying, my God, and reading of the word. I can't be dealing with a whole lot of chicken stuff. My God, I can't get, I got to stay away from that. You're trying to hold me, but I to smother what God has called me to do. I'm trying to move deeper into purpose. I'm trying to move deeper into the vision, deep into what God has called me to do. And you're trying to yank me back because you don't want to grow, and I'm trying to get away from you. I'm kicking in the spirit, or I'm trying to carry you, my God. But you're bucking and kicking, my God. I got to move deeper into purpose, baby. And so I ain't got no problem with clip, clip, clip. I, I promise you I ain't got no problem with it. When I heard a testimony of Yolanda in ministering the greeting, come on, let's give God a hand for Sister Yolanda. She was able to be transparent. She said, I don't even know why I'm sharing this. Oh, we know why you're sharing it, because somebody needed it. Oh, your testimony don't belong to you, it belong to God. Who am I talking to? Oh, she testified, Teresa. She opened herself up to be very vulnerable, and she didn't know why she was saying it, but God knew. Now is the time. Tell somebody what God has done for you. Somebody give God a hand, baby. So, so, so what's standing between you and God? What's standing in between you moving deeper into purpose? Oh, what is it? What is it that God is coming after? What has you been dealing with from the encounter um, early this year that you still ain't really allowed God to take from your life? What are you holding on to that you know that's interfering? Who are you holding on? What are you holding on? Where are you going? What are you doing? What excuses are you still making? To keep you, my God, in the promised land but not possessing the promised land. Or oh, I'm trying to help you understand, you don't want to be in the promised land, you want to possess the promised land. God said, I can't fight your battles for you. I can't give you victory until you allow me to cut you. you I can't go no farther. I didn't send frogs, I didn't send lepers and lizards and blizzards and, and whatever, all nets and everything. I didn't done everything for, I can't go no farther. Clip, clip, clip time. God is trying to execute his will in your life. This is heavy. The Bible is clear that there are times when you and I must engage in spiritual surgery. It's time to do some surgery. Flesh is killing this church. Flesh is killing this church. Don't nobody want to be clipped. It's not enough to stop going to the club. 
It's not enough, my God, to stop smoking cigarettes. It's not enough. It's not enough to go deeper, to be really victorious, to really be able to testify. My God, that what that was used to be on top of you is now under your foot, and you have never returned back to Egypt. Egypt represents captivity. Oh, my God, to fully possess real freedom. See, that's why people, my God, I'm strange to a lot of people. Because to be so sick at one time. To be the person that I once was one time ago. You know what I'm trying to say? To see me operate at the level that God has done it, my God. It's, it's uncomfortable for people who's playing. It's uncomfortable for people who don't know who they are, my God. But I'm not only in freedom, my God, I possess freedom. That's why I can testify like I do. That's why I can, oh, my God. That's why I can share the things that I share with you. That's why I can be transparent with you because that was to be on top of me. I'm on top of it now. I rule it. It don't rule me. When are you going to allow God to clip, clip, clip so you can rule it instead of it rule you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who am I talking to in the church? Amen. We talking about spiritual surgery. Yes, Some of you got to lay your mind back on the altar. Yes. Some of you need to fall back in love. Get your eyes off of men and get your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Quit letting people in this day and hour discourage you, my God, and make you quit on God. Yes. Oh, my God, but as I stated before, if you are covenant people, you don't quit on God. Jesus was in covenant with himself. That's why he called to the altar. When he set sweat, uh, great drops of blood, my God, he pushed on. He said, God, nevertheless, oh, my God, I don't want to do this. But I'm going on because I'm in covenant. Ah, yeah. This is my assignment. Yeah, yeah. Your assignment will make you take a licking and keep on ticking. Yeah. Your assignment won't let you quit. Yeah. When you're trying to possess it, when you think about your kids and some of these, some of these Goliaths and some of these Jerichos that still left in your life, if you think about, my God, if I don't do something about this, if I don't allow God to clip me, you mean tell me my daughter got to go through what I've been through? You mean tell me my son got to deal with this? My God, the devil is alive. Something ought to rise up with you. Come on, somebody. As Minister Tedder said, it's going down in, in the valley. Come on. You got to get. Mm. My God. But see, what am I trying to say? What God dealt with them from the Abrahamic covenant, that was an external surgery. God is trying to do some internal surgery now. As I told y'all, Old Testament dealt with a lot of rituals. External. Conform this way. Do this. Get a turtle. Get a dove. Get a bullock. Get a sheep. My God, sacrifice all, all that's external. God, Jesus said, my God, the kingdom of heaven is now within. You don't have to sacrifice all these animals. But now you got to sacrifice. So as Paul said, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Oh, my God. Flesh is killing the body of Christ everywhere. Colossians 1 and 3. I mean, 3. Write that down. 1 through 8 says, since you have been raised to a new life of Christ. He says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven going off of Christ's church and guests. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. For you died to this life. Watch this, y'all. For your real life is hidden with God, I mean with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. He says, so Colossians says, this is Paul, so put to death, y'all, the sinful nature. Things lurking within you have nothing, Paul says, to do with sexual immorality. Oh, my God, it's time to, oh, my God, I'm going to leave that alone, but, so, oh, my God, oh, my God, when it get, when you get, when it get cold outside, oh, my God, oh, my God, when the urges get to get crazy, I need you women, and I need you men, my God, especially you women, because going over Christ is full of women, I need you, my God, when the temptation, my God, seems to be unbearable, my God, when your mind is all over the place, you need to hurry up, my God, and find some scissors, and you need to start doing warfare in your house, you need to start walking through your bed, we'll tell me, clip, 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 You, David said you got to look like a fool, my God, to do God's will. Oh, if that's going to get your mind off of that mess, my God, clip, 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 because guess what? Covenant people don't live in sin. Covenant people advance from that. Come on, somebody. You don't get to continue to be in sin. Clip, 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 clip. Oh, you got to walk around and say, oh, my God, clip, 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 clip. I don't care what it is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because the enemy know what you like. He going to wave the flag at you. He know what you need. Oh, my God. But you got a good mm, clip, 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 clip. Let's go a little deeper. Oh, my God. Let's go a little deeper, baby. I'm trying to help the body of Christ. Oh, I'm sorry, but it's Bible, baby. Impurity and lust. Oh, Paul said put to death. He didn't say, my God. He didn't say fast. He said put to death. Put to death means kill it. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, give me something to kill this with. 
Oh, come on, look at your neighbor and say, give me something to kill this with. My God, see, some of you, my God, you try to be too cute and you try to be too cool. And the devil running all up and down your back, running all up and down your house. You got to become a warrior, baby. Ah, you got to become a warrior, baby. God ain't looking for no cute people. This is real warfare over here, baby. Oh, you got to be a real one, baby. Trying to be cute and trying to be cool and you're defeated. All of those half-hearted praise. And miserable. Where my war is there? Come on, going over Christ Church. Oh my God. Y'all go ahead. Let me get this finished, and I'm gonna get y'all out of the way. Oh my God. Paul says you gotta put to death this. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater. Is everything about money? Greedy. Greedy for more. When you lust for more stuff, you be you be sure you start worshiping it. Oh, scripture. Don't, don't, don't worship the created thing. Worship the creator of the thing. It's okay for you to have nice things when you worship God who created it. But we reverse it. See, we become contaminated. That's one thing about the enemy, Michael. He always contaminates God's will. So anytime you worship in it more than God who created it, it's out of order. So you got to allow God to clip you and get you back in order. Only, you know how you get clipped? You got to come and repent. Yeah. And say, God, I've been worshiping her. I've been worshiping nails. I've been worshiping sex. I've been worshiping lust. I've been whatever it is. Yeah. Church. Yeah. You got to bring it and sacrifice it, my God. Yeah. You got to allow God to clip it. Mm. Yeah. Pride, disobedience, my God. On resentfulness, my God. Angry at the pastors. Angry at the leaders. All of those things. You got to ah, clip. Yeah. And say, God, give me a fresh start. Yes, Somebody look at your neighbor and say, give me a fresh start. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, give me a pass. Me a pass. Come on, look at him and say it with a conviction. Give me a pass. Me a pass. Amen. Amen. We all a mess on our way to progress. I said we all a mess on our way to progress. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. You can't be a greedy person. My God, truth be told, I got to watch that. Because, you know, pastor like to shine, like to look good, baby. So I got to watch that. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, yep, yep. I got a constant keep the scissors in my hand. You better ask somebody. Come on, Scooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, pastor, yeah, I, I'm, I'm real. I got to constantly keep something in my hand, baby. Because, see, just because you can don't mean you're supposed to. And I can, but that don't mean I'm supposed to. Oh, I can look real good any time, but that don't mean I'm supposed to, baby. But I look just as good inside than I do outside. I'm boasting on Christ. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Woo, somebody give God a hand for Jesus. Mm. Sometimes the Spirit of God will say something to try to provoke you to think more of yourself, not in pride. Some of you can't possess your promised land because your self-esteem and self-confidence. We dealt with that in class. You go up in a home with fear. You go up in a home with abuse. You've been mishandled, my God, from newborn, my God, to present. And my God, you don't believe that you can. You don't believe that the promises of God apply to you. You don't think that God loves you. Even though you're in church every week, you don't feel to really think God loves you. Because if you do, it'll shift your mind. It'll raise your self-esteem. Oh, my God, if you really believe that God loves you and the promises of God is for you, you will get around people, my God, that's, vi that's victorious over the very stuff you're struggling with. If you really believe that God had a better plan for you, if you really believe that all things working together for the good, you'll want to be around people, my God, can help you cross over not just be in freedom, but to possess freedom, my God, but many of us don't want to be possessed, don't want to be possessed, you want to be in freedom and shout about freedom, but you ain't free, quit shouting about something and get free, mm, let's go a little deeper, let's go a little deeper, and so don't be a greedy, don't be, don't be a greedy person. It's an idolatry. Worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, watch this, because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You, you, see, you and I got to put yourself and myself in these scriptures. God saying Christian. This is talking to Christians. It's not talking to unbelievers. If you and I are being dominated by these sins, we invite God's anger in our life. So you angry, but you need to be angry at yourself because you ain't allowing God to clip you so you can move further. You can't operate in God's kingdom. Oh, my God. And you don't deal with this stuff right here. You don't get to walk around in habitual sin and sexual immorality and think that it's okay. God said, because you won't chop, you bringing my hand on your life. God's not going to, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me catch myself. God is not going to go against his covenant. He's not going to allow you to just stay in sin and don't try to do nothing to help you come up out of it. He's going to always send warning. God said, I get warning before destruction. He'll send a message like this, my God, to wake up the sleeping people in the church, my God, because God is concerned about you, because God loves you, my God. God is coming after that. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. God don't want you to be dominated by sin. He got to turn his back on himself. He's going to for a minute, but then he's going to turn around and say, you better repent. My grace ain't going to always be with you. 
You ain't gonna get, keep, keep, keep talking about forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me for the same old stuff. Some of us right now, can I say this, even though Joyce Meyer became popular again, when she said God is not mad at you, God ain't mad at you, but he mad at that sin. See, there's a balance to that. God not mad at you, he sure ain't, but he mad at that sin in our lives. The devil is a lie. See, they don't want to preach about that, but I'll do it going off of Christ church. God is not pleased when we live in sin. God is not pleased when we don't stop. My God, allow him to cut. My God, he's not pleased. He's not mad at you, but he's mad at the sin. Why? Because sin killed him. And sin is killing you and I. Don't tell me my God is okay with sin. The devil is a lie. I might, it may be 20 people left. That's okay. Clip, clip, clip for the comeback, baby. It's all good. I'm okay. I'm okay. Because, see, they don't pay me, so I'm okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so ask yourself, am I inviting the wrath of God in my life? Or oh, I ain't going to try to finish. Are you inviting the wrath of God in your life? The, the, are you so unhappy in freedom? Have you really, my God, possessed freedom? Have you really been captivated? Have you really been baptized into real freedom? Are you really free, my God, from the things that you testify about on Facebook that you really ain't free from? Are you really free, my God, from, from what happened to you in your past? Come on. See, God has said, I'm trying to roll away. And I don't want to mess with it, but he said, I can't, I'm trying to roll away. Yeah. I'm trying to roll away your repost, the shame. Yeah. Shame is your past. Yeah. And I told y'all, some of the warfare that you're in, it's not about your past, it's about where you're going. Yeah. See what y'all say? But if you don't let it go, God can't let it go. Because you keep bringing it up, and God said, I done forgot all the back there. Let's move on, baby. Yeah. Why you keep bringing it up to me, something that I've already forgiven you for? Won't you let it go? Somebody say, let it go. Yeah. Really let it go. You bring it up to God and constantly come to the altar talking about something. God said, girl, what you talking about? Turn y'all and push on. Yeah. God's talking about picture me roll. I'm gone. I ain't tripping on that. <laughs> Forgive yourself and roll. Yes. I have to talk like to y'all because some of y'all don't get it. If I try to be seminary, you, go, you, go, you ain't going to catch it. Man, leave it alone. Leave it on the altar and push. Yeah. Trying to help the church, my God, because we dying. And it ain't because the gospel ain't being preached, it's because they, they, they need to be circumcised in their mind. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He says, Christians, you used to do these things when you were still a part of the world, Egypt. Egypt in the Bible represents captivity, but Egypt in our day and time means the world. He said, when you was in the world, Christians, these are things that people that don't know Christ used to do. Now, I understand that sanctification, that the Bible says we are being sanctified on our way to heaven. Being sanctified, it's a process to being sanctified. None of us is sinless. But God knows. God knows if you allow the Spirit to sanctify you. As Pastor Teresa taught us this Wednesday, many of you is frustrated because you're trying to serve God from the flesh and not from the Spirit. There's a certain thing, it should be an easy victory. But you and I, I and you, are making it hard because we're trying to conquer something that's a spiritual battle. We're trying to conquer it by the flesh. We got to be clipped. We got to be clipped. Oh, this separates the sheep from the goats in the body of Christ. It's okay. It's okay. He said you used to do these things. This is before you became a born-again believer. This shouldn't be associated with you. Not like this. Not, key word, habitually. Not habitually. None of this stuff should be attached to us. If you're flipping them pages, if you're allowing God to do spiritual surgery on you, you should be going from faith to faith, baby, to glory to glory. That's Bible. Oh, my God, I'm sorry, but you should be elevating. Oh, my God, you should evaluate. My God, eliminate so you can elevate. Oh, my God, evaluate the sin, eliminate the sin, then elevate. My God, sin will keep you down. Sin will keep you oppressed and suppressed and depressed. And, my God, and when you and I don't stop and allow God to clip, you inviting the anger of God, the wrath of God. Because God is trying to, my God, to turn you and I to him. God will allow the wrath. People don't talk about this stuff, church, but I'm trying to help you. My God, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands, my God, of an angry God. When God is working you and jabbing on you and trying to get you to move, my God, and shift and, and stop doing stuff, my God, and you choose to do it, my God, you put yourself on the other side of God. That's not good to be here. You put yourself on the left hand when God is on the right hand, baby. And then we wonder why things is not changing. Somebody said, clip, clip, clip. Yeah. Oh, it's still Thanksgiving, so when you get to the Thanksgiving dinner, my God, think about that bird. And clip, clip, clip. Yeah. Why am I saying that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm watching. 
Thank you, because see, some of us, there's going to be some family members there that we ain't talked to. That we don't, we, we, we're going to make sure that when she, because we know the time she always come, and we're going to come after she come, because we don't want to confront nothing. Anything you know, confront won't change. So therefore, we're going to avoid all. If not, we're going to come up in there, and we're going to appear like an angel. But deep down side, external, we look like an angel. But in our heart, the motive, we're waving wolf. We'll sit amongst family members and won't talk to them, but we'll, come on, we'll get up amongst them, act like it's all good, but we'll, we'll, we'll appear to be an angel. We'll appear to forgive. Mm. Let your light shine. Let God use you. Let God use you. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malice, slander, and dirty language. Write down 2 Corinthians. Let me finish this point one. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 16. Paul's telling us, I preach this when he's talking about yokes and bondages. Paul tells us, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Whew. I already balanced that out. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? If you are more comfortable hanging around people who don't strive to live for Christ, but you're more comfortable hanging around people who don't strive to live Christ for Christ. If you are more comfortable hanging around people who don't strive to live with Christ. If you are more comfortable hanging around people who are not striving to live with Christ, you need to go back and allow God to circumcise your heart. If hanging around God's people is so grievous and angry and frustrating you, you need to be circumcised, man. If you always making excuses about co-fellowshipping with people, you need to be circumcised. If you are that bitter and that angry and everybody's fault, everybody's fault, and you don't want to fellowship, you don't want to get connected to a 12 and all that, you jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues and all that type of stuff, but you don't want to be around God's people, but you're quick to hang around people who's not of God, you need to be circumcised. And God is going, His mercy only going to strive for so long with somebody like that because you're misrepresenting Christianity. Because when you are hanging around them and they know that you don't hang around your own brothers and sisters, you're sending the wrong message. You are a stumbling block. I don't know how many tongues you speak in. Yeah. 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 When they see that you don't mind hanging around them, but when it comes time to go, oh, I don't want to go to church. They're too messy, girl. But you always around her and she doing everything under the sun, every word come out of her mouth, and you okay with that. Come on. See what I'm trying to say? But when it comes to sharing, I don't want to be a hard sharing. You need to be circumcised. You're a stumbling block and God going to judge you. The Bible, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, Paul said it's not my job to judge those who are outside of the faith. Yeah. Paul said it's my job to judge those who profess to be Christians. That means if we are doing anything, anything, you have a right as a brother to come to your other brother and say, look, man, I need to talk to you. Yeah. It's not my job to deal with that person who don't know Christ because they don't person, they, they don't know. Come but on. if I'm supposed to be a man of God and you're supposed to be a man of God or a woman of God and people are doing stuff that misrepresents Christ and bring shame on this church and bring shame on your Lord and Savior, you have a right to pull them to the side. That ain't judging. That's what the Bible say do. It ain't my job to judge those on the outside. But I have to come to front you if you're on the inside and you live in any kind of way. You're doing all kind of stuff under the sun. But see, because people are immature, and they got so much flesh, yeah. when someone comes to them out of love, yeah. my God trying to warn them that, you, you, that this is what's going on. You need to shift, woman of God, you need to shift, son. They'll get offended because they're yeah. too much flesh. We talking about, we give gal, clip, 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 which is killing the church yeah. everywhere. Y'all know what I'm talking. I'm not talking about going over Christ and I, just going over Christ. Right. You are holding up the promises. But you know, God got great things in store for you. The Bible's full of promises. Your season is much better than your past. Your future is much better than what you've been through. God is trying to give it to you, but he can't give it to you until you allow him to clip you. You and I, I and you are disqualifying ourselves. It ain't God, and it ain't your neighbor. It's your belief system. Mm. So what harmony, what partnership? My God, does righteousness and wickedness have? How can light live? Listen to this, with darkness. Look at the verbiage. How can light live? That's not visiting. That means you are living with. You always heard, but he ain't never heard. Oh, let me be careful. How can light live with darkness? Now, I'm not talking to married folks. I ain't talking to married folks. I'm talking about you single women that's dating men that don't want to come to church. 
I ain't talking about husband and wife. The Bible says whatever state you married in, you stay in this state. I said, that's Bible right there. I'm going to balance mine out, baby. You'll never be able to throw me under the bus. My God, I'm talking about those, my God, who date me, but they ain't in their church, and you had justified and made excuses for them. And you just recently started dating them. This ain't like you've been with them for 20 years. But you let him stay home while you come to church. How can, how can, how can that live with darkness? That's darkness. My God. Clip, clip, clip. Clip, clip, clip. Oh, they don't like that. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. God told Ezekiel, if you don't warn my people, God told Ezekiel, if you don't warn your people, you better understand the calling that's on your pastor's life. It's the reason why God built me like he built me. It's the reason why God has set me up in my natural life so I don't have to depend on the church so I can preach what the Bible says preach instead of being told what to preach because y'all paying me. That ain't how it go, baby. I'm going to preach, thus says the Lord, and I'm going to say what the Spirit of God tells me to say, and I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you, baby. You need to understand what you're sitting up under. How can you live? How can you live with darkness? I'm about to do what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? What harmony can there be? There is no harmony. God works in unity. The Spirit of the Lord works and cohabitate in, 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 in peace, in spirit. What, how can the Christ and the devil, my God, co-labor together, join together? You're a Christian. Supposed to be. How can we join ourselves with the devil and think that it's okay? Mm. No, no, no. How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Oh, no, I have to... Uh, so, so, and the, how, how can the, I'm going to leave that alone. And, and, and what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will live in them and walk among them. And they will be my God and they will be my, what, my people. Where are you taking God? God lives on the inside of you. Why are you taking him? Who and what are you joining God to? Don't you know when you and I lay down with someone that we married to, we are joining God to a prostitute too? Read the Bible. The Bible told the leaders, my God, you are prostituting yourself with idols. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The leaders, Minister Francetta, are prostituting themselves, sleeping with idols. Anything. If you worship a man or a woman more than God, that is an idol. You are prostituting yourself to an idol. When he has more control over you and your commitment to God, when you let somebody tell you what you can't do and should do, when you can't go to church, when you can't go to church, you are prostituting yourself to an idol. Clip, clip, clip. Yeah. We might not never have 500, but that's okay, friend. Said I'm cool. I'm in God's will. I bet you that. We are the temple of the living God. Do anybody in this church appreciate truth? How many of you can truly say that you value truth? Yeah. Only a few. Some was writing. I'm going to give you a pass. But the whole church should have been standing up if you value truth. As Minister Madeline taught me and taught us, you might not agree with the messenger, but listen to the message. God gives warning before destruction. I don't want your 2019 to look like 2018. I was thanking God this morning, 2018 been good for Pastor Peoples. Even though me and my, my wife had to go through stuff in her body, but 2018 been real good for me personally. I've died some more. I've understood the calling that's on my life. God has separated some weight that was once sitting up under me. He got it off of me. I got a whole lot of reasons to be grateful for. Oh, it's been good, my God, Lawanya, even though it's been painful, but it's been good. My God, because God will purge for the comeback. Yeah. Listen to me, Jackie. God will purge for the comeback, daughter. Oh, I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. Let me give you this. He said, I will live among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. If it does not, let me close. If it does not glorify God or edify God's church or help you grow in the Lord, then it has to be clipped. It has to be clipped. If it don't, if it does not glorify God, edify the church, or help you grow in the Lord, then it needs to be clipped. It has to go. Are you with me? Yes. As I close with this one scripture, write this down. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. You say, that's me and you, I am allowed to do anything. But not everything is good for you. 
And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. God, all God is saying in point number one is that he tried to bring the people of God in Joshua's day. He's trying to renew their covenant. What God is saying to us this afternoon and going off of Christ church, that he's trying to renew your covenant. God is in this season, Janice, in prayer, showing me that he's bringing up and raising up a covenant people. Not a church people. There will be people going off of Christ that will come and benefit from the church. Y'all listen to me. I'm from the Father. I'm telling you, I spent a whole lot of time with God. There will be people that will come and benefit from your church that's not called to be planted in this church. There will be people that will come and get what we got because they're not getting it, and that's okay. See what I'm trying to say? But there is a remnant that will come, get connected, and become planted in the ministry. And as they are coming, I want us to open up our heart and welcome them into the family. There will be some that has been planted, serve their purpose, and they will move on. That's okay. One plant, one, and God gives the So all of my leaders and us, this is things that we discuss. We starting to come to an understanding. As the first lady has told me, we might not never get 500 because one thing about it, because your church, you preach, not your church, you preach and talk about something that people don't want to hear. You command the people to come up higher and you preach against sin because I don't want you to dominate. I don't want you to defeat it. I want you in victory. Remember, God told the people, I can't fight these battles for you until you be circumcised. I can't take you no further until you allow me to cut you. I can't do what I want to do in your life until you to repent of our sins. And it's unpopular. Jesus said, clean up the inside of the cup, and then the outside shall be clean. And so there's an ebb and flow. Don't panic. Don't panic. You look around. Some is out of town. Some not here. Some that moved on. I'm okay with that. I got to set the boundaries. And understand that everybody ain't going to go the long way. There will be some, like you, that will probably die with me. Some like you, that will probably die with me. And well, I would probably release Pastor Teresa to start our own ministry if that's where God has taken her. It may come a time where you may be released to go with Pastor Teresa and help her pastor her church, but you're an extension of your pastor. Extension. There will be some like yourself that's connected to the ministry. They got that evangelistic spirit on them. They will go and preach and come back. Go and preach and come back. Go and preach just like your pastor was up on the Bishop McIntosh. It won't move until God released me. 18 years later, I never let nobody influence me to get ahead of God. See, I'm starting to grow and understand as a pastor. Everything don't belong to me. Some of you, you will leave before your time and you won't get the full importation. And the transfer of the spirit. I was blessed to be able to receive that from Bishop. The full importation. I didn't get the partial blessing. I got the full blessing. And that's why God has stabilized me these many years. Because I did it right. Some of you were birth ministries. And you look back five or ten years from now. The Lord led is coming. And you will be able to say, I helped establish that. At going off of Christ church. What am I trying to say? Find your spot. Be found faithful in your spot. And when that time come. Have enough respect and dignity to sit down and talk. Quit letting people and sin and brokenness cause you to shipwreck and leave God's purpose. Some of you young men, I want to encourage you. We know that women is always upheld the church all throughout the Bible. When Jesus rose, guess who was there? The women. In his greatest hour, the men forsake him, but the women was right there to hold him down. Some of you come from churches where they never allow women to have a voice in the ministry. I have even been told by God, going off of Christ is ran by women. By some men that was a whoremonger. So he criticized my daughters 
who've been holding us down, Pastor, for a long time. But because I know who I am and I understand the calling, I welcome your gift. 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 I'm not intimidated by who you are. It makes me feel good when I don't have to pastor you. I get to lead you and speak into your purpose and watch you fly like a butterfly when you used to crawl like a caterpillar. Understand what you're sitting up under. Quit letting people, my God, contaminate you and get in your ear. Surgery is always painful. But it's a must if you're going to possess your next. You're not going to get into your next church with flesh. We will not get into our necks corporally, individually, with flesh. You and I got to die. You and I need to recommit to covenant. I don't want you to commit to the church because you frustrate me when you commit to church, but if you commit to Christ, you'll make me smile. Commit to Christ, not church. Because you know why? Somebody going to do something in church to make you want to leave. But if you commit to covenant in Christ, they can't move you. 